Give me a few minutes and I'll show you 10 tiny tweaks that make your Canva designs go from meh to wow instantly. I'm a self-taught designer who built a six-figure digital product shop using Canva as my main tool. So these tips are literally the tricks I use in my own templates so they stand out and actually sell. Let me share them with you. Okay, first tip, and I swear this one will instantly level up your designs. Choose photos that actually match your color palette. You know, I learned this after looking at tons of designs online. The reason some graphics look so cohesive is because everything in the design is working together. And that starts with color. A lot of beginners make the mistake of thinking a photo looks nice, so they throw it into the design. But if the colors don't match your palette, the whole thing just feels off. Here's an example. Let's say my palette is beige and muted neutrals. If I suddenly use a photo with bright blues or neon tones, it completely clashes. Do you see that? So once you've decided on your palette, make sure the photos you choose already have those tones in them. It seriously makes such a big difference. A little trick I use in Canva is I click on the photo and then check the color swatches that show up under the photo colors. Canva will show you the exact shades in that photo and it's an easy way to see if it fits your palette. Another thing you can do is search for photos using your palette keywords. So if your colors are beige and muted neutrals, you can type in neutral, warm tones, or beige in Canva, Pexels, or Kaboom Picks. You'll instantly find photos that blend perfectly with your design. When your photos match your color palette, everything looks more cohesive. And if you compare it side by side with a design where the photo doesn't match, you'll see exactly what I mean. Tip number two is something I personally love and use in almost all of my designs. Use less spacing in your text. Now, this is definitely a personal preference I developed over the years, but I really feel like it makes your design look cleaner. A lot of designers will tell you to give your text enough breathing room, and that's true, but sometimes people go way too far with it. So for example, look at this text. It has really wide letter spacing and a lot of line spacing. And there's nothing technically wrong with it, but to me, it just looks a bit outdated and a bit scattered. So what I like to do is tighten everything up. I'll lower the letter spacing, sometimes even going into the negatives, and reduce the line spacing just slightly. Nothing crazy, just enough to bring the text closer together. Once you do that, the whole thing suddenly feels more modern. You see this in a lot of high-end Pinterest designs and modern layouts. The text is usually tight and structured, not floating all over the place. Of course, you still want your text to be readable. Don't make it so tight that everything looks squished. But reducing unnecessary space is such a simple tweak that instantly elevates the entire vibe of your design. Okay, next tip, pair the right fonts. A lot of beginners make the mistake of mixing too many styles, like a script font with a bold display font, with a serif, with a sans serif, and suddenly nothing matches anymore. Your design starts looking noisy. A simple rule I follow is two fonts, max three, and they should complement each other, not compete. So usually I'll choose one strong font for the heading and a clean, simple one for the body text. For example, if I'm going for a luxurious look, I'll use a serif font like Lustria for the heading, pair it with a script font like Edwardian script for the subheading, and then use a thin, simple font like Muktai for the body text to keep everything elegant. But if I want something louder and more bold, I'll use a strong display font like Horizon for the heading, then pair it with a wider modern font like Montserrat for the body text so the whole design feels bold but still cohesive. One trick in Canva is the font combinations tool. Canva has ready-made font combinations that naturally work well together. It's such a good starting point, especially if you're not confident with typography yet. The key here is harmony. If your fonts look like they belong in the same family, even if they're different, your entire design will feel more intentional and put together. All right, next tip is choose only a few right colors. A mistake I see a lot is people using way too many colors just because they look nice individually. But colors don't work in isolation. They have to work together. 
A good rule of thumb is stick to two to three main colors, max four if you really know what you're doing. Usually that means one main color, one supporting color, and one accent. What I like to do is pick colors that naturally complement each other. So if I'm going for a neutral palette, I'll choose beige, cream, and maybe a soft brown as the accent. In Canva, you can also save your brand colors so everything stays consistent across your templates. And if you're stuck choosing colors, use the color palettes in the Styles tab. Canva literally gives you combinations that already work well together. Another reason I like sticking to just a few colors is because it makes things so much easier for your clients when they edit your templates. In Canva, there's a feature where if you change one color, you can click Change All and Canva updates every element with that exact shade. But this only works if you're consistent with your hex codes. If your design has 10 different shades that all look similar but actually have different hex codes, your client will have to change everything one by one, which is a nightmare. So keeping your palette small and using the same exact hex codes across your design makes editing so much faster and way more user-friendly. The key is consistency. When you repeat the same small set of colors throughout your design, everything looks so much more cohesive and intentional. You don't need a rainbow, you just need the right colors. By the way, if you want to get even better at design, typography, or just creativity in general, one thing that's genuinely helped me is joining classes on Skillshare. I've been knee deep in designing this last quarter, you know, getting ready for Q1, which is always my busiest season on Etsy, and I really wanted to level up the look and feel of my templates. One thing that helped me do that was diving into Skillshare classes. And one class that I've been absolutely loving is Sell Your Art, How to Build a Brand and Start an Online Shop by Natasha L. She's an entrepreneur herself who sells art as physical products, which I find so interesting because it's actually something I've wanted to try for the longest time. I just never had the guts to start an actual physical store. I don't know if I have what it takes to run something like that properly, but in this 22 minute lesson, she breaks everything down step by step on how to build a brand and start an online shop. And it's so refreshing hearing it from someone who's actually doing the work. One part that really caught my attention was lesson three, make art and make products that sell. She shares a bunch of physical and digital product ideas you can make as an artist. And it's actually so cool hearing it from someone who thinks differently than I do. Some of the products she suggests were things I never even considered and I've been in the digital product world for years. What I love about Skillshare classes is that there's a project at the end. For this one, you actually get to put everything into practice by creating and sharing your own website or online shop. Natasha even encourages you to upload it so she and the whole community can take a look. I've been browsing the student projects and everyone's websites are just so cute and so well branded. Their art is beautiful. If you're an artist who has that talent and you've been wanting to turn it into something real, I highly recommend taking this class. You'll learn so much in just 22 minutes. And honestly, that's the magic of Skillshare. Every class is created by industry experts who know exactly what they're talking about. It's perfect for people like us who want to keep sharpening our craft at our own pace. And since it's December, Skillshare also makes such a thoughtful gift. I'm actually giving one of my family friends a Skillshare gift card because she's been wanting to start selling digital products too. If you want to try it out, the first 500 people to use my link in the description or scan the QR code will get a one month free trial to join Skillshare and take as many classes as you want. So if you've been wanting to improve your design skills or any skills really, this is the perfect time to start. Links down below. Tip number five is be meticulous, like extremely detail oriented with your alignments. You know, this is something I'm obsessed with, like in a way that probably isn't normal, but here we are. <laughs> you know, when we were building the vault, which has over a thousand digital products, I literally went through every single design just to check the alignment of every text box, every shape, every line, because these tiny adjustments make a massive difference in how polished your design looks. For example, with text, I always justify my body paragraphs. Even if it's just filler text, justified alignment instantly makes a layout look cleaner and more structured. 
Another example, if I'm creating multiple lines or shapes, I never eyeball the spacing. I'll select everything, go to position and click tidy up and let Canva space them out evenly. It takes two seconds, but look at the before and after. The evenly spaced version looks so much cleaner and way more professional. These alignment details might seem small, but they completely change how your design feels. Clean alignment is equal to clean design. Okay, next tip, take advantage of Canva's elements. Canva has a treasure trove of elements, illustrations, icons, drawings, and so many of them are completely free. Let me show you an example. This design I made for a cafe inside the vault looks super detailed, almost like I hand drew everything, but I didn't. Every single illustration here came straight from Canva and they were all free. That's the magic of using the right elements. They instantly elevate your design and make it look custom even if you didn't draw anything yourself. Canva has thousands if not millions of elements and there are gems in there. You just have to dig a little. I personally love using free elements in my templates so clients don't need Canva Pro to edit or download them. And trust me, there are more than enough free graphics to create beautiful professional designs. Here's a simple trick to find great elements. Browse Canva's ready-made templates. If you spot an illustration style you like, click the element and then hit info. Canva will show you right away whether it's free or requires pro. From there, click view more by this artist and you'll see their entire collection. Usually if you love one illustration, you'll love everything else they've created. Just remember to double check which ones are free. Inside the vault, I even created a cheat sheet with tons of free Canva elements because people don't realize how many high quality graphics are hiding in there. You just have to look for it. Tip number seven is to utilize white space. A lot of beginners think they need to fill every corner of their canvas because it feels like empty space is wasted space. But in design, empty space is actually breathing room. Think of white space like the pause in a sentence. Without it, everything feels cramped and overwhelming. With it, your design suddenly looks more put together. For example, if you have a headline and a photo, don't jam them together. Leave some space around your text. Give your elements room to stand on their own. And don't be afraid of margins. Margins are your best friend. If something feels off in your layout and you can't figure out why, try removing elements or increasing the spacing around them. Nine times out of 10, the design will look instantly better. Tip number eight is something I personally love doing. Add small text around your design. This is definitely a style preference, but I've noticed it in a lot of modern layouts, especially in editorial brand designs. Designers will add tiny bits of text in different corners of the layout, and it instantly gives the design a more elevated look. It's hard to explain, but adding small text creates this subtle layered effect. It makes a design feel more dynamic without actually making it busy. For example, in some of my templates, you'll see small details like a brand name in the top corner or a tiny website link under a heading or a little line of text near the edges. They're not there to be read, they're there to add balance. The key is to keep these small texts minimal and subtle, you know, a brand name, a tagline, a website. Just a small detail here and there adds so much to the overall layout. Tip number nine is experiment with your layouts. One of the biggest mistakes I see people is sticking to the most basic structure, you know, photo, a heading under it, maybe a little text, and that's it. But there are so many ways you can design a page now. Your layout doesn't have to be predictable. Honestly, the way I learned how to position things in my designs was just by experimenting, you know, moving things around, tilting photos, trying different placements and seeing what clicked. For example, look at this design. It's not your typical centered layout. One photo is tilted slightly to the right, another is tilted left, another is pushed all the way to the side instead of sitting perfectly in the middle. None of this follows the traditional rules, but it looks good and that's what matters. A lot of great design is simply trial and error. You won't know if something works until you actually try it in your layout. So don't be afraid to break symmetry, shift elements to the left or right, 
overlap things, play with scale, just experiment. Remember, people buy templates because they want something they can't easily create themselves. If your layout is just a photo and centered text, most people can do that in two minutes. What makes your work stand out is the creativity behind the structure. So push yourself to explore different compositions, move things around, try unexpected placements. If it looks good, it's good, even if it doesn't follow any traditional design rules. Your creativity really is the limit here. And my final tip is to zoom out and look at your designs as a whole. Every time I finish a page, I click on grid view so I can see all the designs side by side. This is so important because when you're focused on one page at a time, it's easy to lose sight of whether everything still feels consistent and on brand. But the moment you zoom out, you instantly see if something looks off, maybe a color is too strong, the layout feels out of place, or one page looks like it belongs to a different set. And here's another reason why I swear by this. When you eventually make your product photos, you're going to put multiple pages together in one image. If your designs already look good beside each other in grid view, your product photos will automatically look good too. So basically, you're hitting two birds with one stone. You're checking brand consistency. You're pre-planning strong product photos without even trying. So every time you finish a page, go to grid view, zoom out, and make sure everything flows together. It's such a simple habit, but it makes a huge difference in the final result. All right, and that's everything for today. I hope this gave you some ideas you can start using right away. Canva is such a powerful tool when you know how to use it intentionally. If you want templates that already follow all the principles I talked about, check out The Vault. It's my library of over 1,000 digital products that I personally designed, and you can start selling them right away. I'll leave the link down below. Also, if you want to learn even more creative skills, don't forget to join Skillshare. The first 500 people who use my link in the description or scan the QR code will get a one-month free trial. So take advantage of it and start learning today. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It really, really helps my channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.